If you picture scientific progress as a straight line, you're imagining a story that never really existed. Real labs are messy, glassware chips notes get smudged, and experiments misbehave in ways textbooks never warn you about. Yet hidden inside that chaos are the moments that shift history. The difference isn't luck alone, it's what a scientist does with luck whether they notice the oddity, resist the urge to toss it out and ask the question nobody else thought to ask. In other words, accidents don't change the world on their own. People do when they recognize an accident for what it might become. The first and perhaps most famous example of a happy accident is penicillin. Picture Alexander Fleming in 1928, returning from vacation to his London lab. On his bench were what should have been routine petri dishes of bacteria. Instead, he saw them spoiled by stray mold. Many scientists before him had seen similar contamination and scraped it off without a second thought. But Fleming paused. Around the mold was a halo where the bacteria had died back. He wondered, was this an accident worth investigating? That pause changed medicine forever. Fleming cultured the mold, identified it as penicillium Tatum and studied the juice it secreted. What he found was extraordinary. The substance didn't just slow bacterial growth, it obliterated it without harming animal cells. The implications were enormous. At a time when infections from a scraped knee or a routine surgery could kill this mold promised something close to a miracle. Yet penicillin's road from moldy dish to medicine wasn't instant. Fleming himself struggled to purify and scale the substance. He published his findings, but the discovery might have remained a scientific curiosity if not for the urgency of World War II. In the early 1940s, a team at Oxford led by Howard Florey and Ernst Chain picked up Fleming's work. With the help of Norman Heatley and others, they solved the hard parts purifying, stabilizing, and producing penicillin in usable quantities. Even then, it took a massive mobilization of resources from U.S. government funding to industrial-scale fermentation to turn penicillin into a weapon against infection. Farmers in Illinois provided corn, steep liquor, an unlikely but perfect growth medium while companies like Pfizer re-engineered their production lines. The result was a revolution. Battlefield infections that once killed soldiers by the thousands began to retreat. Civilian life changed just as dramatically. Pneumonia, syphilis, sepsis diseases once seen as inevitable killers suddenly had a cure. The accidental contamination of a dish became the foundation of the antibiotic era. Without curiosity, Fleming's observation would have been a footnote. Without infrastructure, Flory's team would have hit a dead end. Together, they changed the arc of human health. If penicillin emerged from mold on a dish, the second great accident burst forth from darkness. In 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen was experimenting with a crook's tube, a device that generated mysterious rays when charged. He noticed something odd. A fluorescent screen across the room glowed even when the tube was covered. Light wasn't supposed to pass through wood or cardboard. Was it a leak? Most might have shrugged. Röntgen did the opposite. He layered materials of varying thickness between source and screen, cataloged, which blocked the rays and even placed his wife's hand in the path. The resulting photograph was shocking bones, stark a wedding ring, gleaming skin and flesh rendered ghostly transparent. What Röntgen had discovered were x-rays. He moved carefully but quickly documenting his process and sharing results without hyperbole. The medical community leapt at the discovery. Within months, surgeons were using x-rays to locate bullets and fractures without opening the body. Dentists began peering beneath enamel. Physicists scrambled to understand where these rays fit in the electromagnetic spectrum. The pattern here mirrors Fleming's surprise, then disciplined curiosity, then translation into practice. What made x-rays so powerful wasn't just their novelty, but their utility. They solved a problem no other tool could seeing inside the living without cutting them open. Once that benefit was clear, adoption was rapid. Hospitals rushed to install x-ray machines, often with little regard for the risks. Early adopters didn't yet understand radiation exposure. Some technicians suffered burns and long-term damage. Over time, though, safety protocols shielding and dosimetry emerged. The discovery matured from a risky marvel into a cornerstone of modern diagnostics. Today, it's hard to imagine medicine without x-rays and their descendants' CT scans, mammography, airport security scanners. But at the start, it all hinged on Röntgen, noticing what shouldn't have been there and choosing to investigate. His curiosity turned a glowing screen into a window into the body. The third case looks more mundane at first glance, a candy bar melting in a pocket. In the mid-1940s, Percy Spencer, an engineer at Raytheon, was standing near an active magnetron, the vacuum tube at the heart of radar when he realized the chocolate in his pocket had liquefied. Annoying, maybe, but hardly revolutionary. Most people would have tossed the candy and moved on. Spencer didn't. He wondered what was happening. He sprinkled popcorn kernels near the tube. They popped. He tried an egg. It exploded. Intrigued, he built a metal box-fed microwaves inside and closed the door 
door. Food placed within heated quickly and evenly. Spencer had stumbled into the principle of microwave cooking. At first, the machines that emerged were enormous expensive and intimidating closer to industrial equipment than kitchen appliances. But over time, engineers miniaturized them. Regulators certified them and marketers rebranded them from scary radiation ovens to convenient microwaves. Adoption was slow at first. People weren't sure what to do with them. Early recipe books focused on reheating rather than cooking. But as families grew busier in the post-war decades, convenience won out. Leftovers could be ready in minutes. Popcorn could be made without pots or oil. And the entire rhythm of dinner changed. The science was the easy part. Microwaves excite polar molecules, especially water generating heat through friction. The sociology was harder. Consumers had to trust the box and culture had to adjust. Eventually, it did. Today, the microwave is a kitchen staple as unremarkable as a toaster. But its origin was anything but ordinary, a melted candy bar near a radar tube. Across these first three stories, a pattern is already visible. First comes an anomaly that looks like a nuisance mold where it shouldn't be light, where none should pass chocolate behaving badly. Then comes a shift in perception. Irritation turns to curiosity, curiosity to experimentation. Finally, there's the scaffolding systems of production safety marketing and distribution that transform accident into everyday tool. The accidents themselves don't change the world. It's the human response, the choice to treat a glitch as data instead of trash that does. And sometimes that choice rewrites entire chapters of history. If medicine, physics, and cooking owe their revolutions to accidents, so too does industry. Few stories capture this better than Charles Goodyear's obsession with rubber. In the early 19th century, natural rubber was a frustrating substance. It was sticky in heat, brittle in cold, and prone to rot. Goodyear poured his life into fixing it. He experimented with chemicals, heat pressure, usually with disastrous results. Friends begged him to stop. Creditors hounded him. His family often lived in poverty because of his obsession. Then, by accident, he dropped a mixture of rubber and sulfur onto a hot stove. Instead of breaking down the material transformed, it became tough yet flexible resistant to both heat and cold and practically indestructible compared to untreated rubber. Goodyear had stumbled upon vulcanization. The discovery revolutionized industry. Suddenly, rubber became usable in all climates. Belts, hoses, waterproof clothing, and eventually tires all depended on vulcanized rubber. The Industrial Revolution gained a material as important as steel or coal. Later, the automobile age became unthinkable without it tires for cars, trucks, and airplanes all rely on Goodyear's mistake. Yet Goodyear himself never reaped the reward. He died poor, though his name lived on through the company that honored his legacy. His story illustrates another truth about accidental discoveries. Recognizing the breakthrough is only part of the equation. Building wealth and institutions from it requires timing resources and sometimes luck of a different kind. If Goodyear's story is about industrial persistence, the tale of the post-it note is about creative persistence. In the 1960s, Spencer Silver, a chemist at 3M, was trying to invent a super strong adhesive. Instead, he made the opposite a weak glue that barely stuck to anything. Most would have called it a failure. Silver didn't. He kept promoting his solution without a problem waiting for someone to see its use. That someone was Art Fry, another 3M scientist and a church choir singer. Frustrated that his hymn book bookmarks kept slipping out, Fry realized that Silver's weak adhesive could hold a piece of paper in place without tearing the page. Together, they created created the prototype of the post-it note. At first, the idea seemed trivial. Paper with a dab of weak glue hardly screamed innovation. But when 3M flooded offices with free samples, people fell in love. The little squares became indispensable for reminders notes and brainstorming sessions. They covered refrigerators, monitors, and whiteboards. They became icons of creativity, even showing up in movies and startup offices as shorthand for innovation. Remember, each began as an accident. None of them looked promising at the start. But people noticed, persisted, and built the systems to carry the accident forward. That's the secret behind history's greatest mistakes. It isn't that accidents bless us on their own. It's that we learn to listen when the unexpected knocks and to build bridges from surprise to solution.